Okay, today we're looking at spreadsheet. Hi, over a year ago, uh, or maybe two or three years ago, I made the video on uh, bet sizing with Betfair and a little quick look at um, the Kelly Criterion. Uh, I, I found a few mistakes in uh, how I described it. Now, I want to really look at the formula just to explain it in a bit more depth. Um, if the odds are 3 to 1, how you convert that to percentages, because that was the example I used, you add 1 to the decimal of 3 to 1 to get 4, and 1 divided by 4 gives you 25% odds for win. Now 1 minus 25 gives you 75% odds against win. Now the discussion was for lay betting which is odds against win. So for 3 to, odd, three to 1 odds you had a 75% chance of winning. Now I didn't quite explain why I use that from my investigation, it's sort of the sweet spot where you're getting a good return for your outlay without risking undue loss. Now, you might say, well, you know, for 10 to 1 or greater, which is historically true, I've seen lots of statistics, you know, out of 15,000 races, you know, only something like... Uh, 300 or so of greater than uh, 10 to 1 ever come in. So you can imagine how small a percentage that actually is. But the actual percentage of busting, because with Betfair, the way it works when you bet against is not... I you have to really fully realise, I think most do, maybe some don't. Now, when you bet against, uh, I think the minimum bet size is $5 at Betfair. If you put $5 against for 3 to 1, you're risking $15 loss for a $5 win. That's right. So if you bet for a $5 win, 10 to 1 against, uh, you're risking 10 times $5, you're risking $50 loss for your five dollars so you can see it 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 increases exponentially um, the amount you lose is incredibly is incredibly risky uh, even though the higher the odds the chance of losing becomes more remote the 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 cost of losing becomes harder to recover and incredibly more risky. So I graphed it in this chart here to show you the risk versus return. Now that point is value for four to one, uh, four, four or three to one. And that's the increasing value of all those bets going out. Uh, oh, from one uh, yeah, uh, three yeah, uh, increasing value of the bets. Let's see. Oh yeah, four percent. Uh, where is it? Well, anyway, as it goes out, let's see, two point four percent. 1.56%. I think, oh yeah, yeah, here, here they are, yeah. See, the 3 to 1 was the 6.25% was the Kelly criterion to bet on, which was similar to my equation in the original um, thing, but I calculated it wrong. I had it at 62.5. It's actually 6.25. Um, I was sort of right. Uh, anyway, 
and then 4%, 2.73. You see, the amount you risk gets less and less because the risk of blowing up gets greater and greater. Even though the likelihood of losing gets less, the drawdown or blow up cost becomes greater. So you invest smaller and smaller amounts. Um, and as you can't bet in fractions, when it has to be an integer bet. I think it does, five or multiples of five, or maybe five fifty a dollar. I don't, you know. So I suppose if you had a betting, a betting, um, I suppose if you could match a bet for three hundred, you'd have to find uh, roughly round it up to one percent, one percent of three hundred, which would be. Uh, Ten threes of the uh, will be ten percent will be thirty dollars. One, one would be three dollars. Uh, so yeah, for a, for eleven to one favorite with a um, uh, payroll of with a you know with your betting bankroll of say three hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or whatever, if you bet one one percent of it. And uh, and you're matching on a lay on um, Betfair. Say the match you were doing was five hundred, and your bankroll was a thousand. Uh, you could only match one percent of five hundred, which would be five dollars anyway. So it wouldn't really matter. Um, how much your bankroll? If your bankroll was twice that, I suppose you could bet. Um, ten dollars. So yeah, um, if you catch what I mean. If anyone needs further explanation, I'll uh, I'll either tack on a bit of, on a spreadsheet on the end of this. I don't want to go on too long. Or you can contact me on my Buy Me a Coffee site, Buy Me a Coffee, and and I'll give you a personal breakdown. Um. Uh, yeah, but as you can see, three to one's about the sweet spot. Of course, it goes up even more, but the likelihood of losing gets even less, even though uh, I think the odds for the win start to go up. To 30 and so on. Therefore, the odds against win start to drop. So I think it might curve down again. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, you can see, uh, as you can see, the odds against win are going up, but the Kelly criterion are going down. Uh, so yeah, actually, the odds against win will probably go down, but uh, yeah, maybe the Kelly criterion might go. It would probably go up, but it would be increasingly risky. So you'd want to double check, have other statistics to check that it's not a dead set head-on favourite. Uh, it may be a favourite, but you want to be pretty sure it's going to lose. Although you won't lose as much as if you back a dead cert to fail, like a long shot, that actually wins. Um, that is why the Kelly criterion is less for dead certain losers than dead certain winners. Because dead certain winners don't cost as much to lose as dead certain losers do because of the length of the odds. It's slightly confusing, but I hope you get it. Um, that's really all I wanted to say about that. Um, I was going to make a more elaborate video. Uh, really, I haven't got time. I just hope this is of help to someone. See the chart. The longer the odds, the less you bet. The shorter the odds, the more you bet. Because even if you do lose, you don't lose as much. Although I think the sweet spot's about three to one for me.
Uh, but because I found I did have a look at it with a, a data table and really at about two to one it, it, things start to get ridiculous you, know, you virtually never never win okay anyway I'll sign off now I think I've been talking for too long